How tough is it to get a healthcare proxy? It's one of the most simple things you can do. You just assume that you can still continue to make medical decisions for them if they get in an unfortunate situation, but that's actually not the case. Why isn't this top of the list for every parent? I think it's mostly that people just aren't aware. You just don't know if the worst is gonna happen to your family. Married, single, young, old, everyone should have one. Today, we're talking about healthcare proxies for adult children, or frankly, anyone that doesn't have one. We're going to cover what a healthcare proxy is, how to get one, and the critical conversations you need to have as part of the process. Hi, welcome to Money Unscripted, a podcast from Fidelity Investments. I'm Allie Donnelly. When it comes to your or your child's healthcare, this one document could make all the difference. The bakers know that all too well. So now they're on a mission to help other families and honor their daughter's memory. Bailey loved the beach, and she loved the water. It's been five years since Shawnee and Scott Baker lost their daughter, Bailey Grogan. Bailey was the epitome of what you'd want in a daughter. She was smart, fun, outgoing, caring. Bailey was just 18, studying to be a neurosurgeon at a Florida university. She was very compassionate, but, but yet she had a really silly side. She did, and she made people laugh. Bailey was heading into her sophomore year and had just returned to campus from the summer. She went out with friends for a 21st birthday party. Coming home, she was hit by a car crossing the street. He said, your daughter's been in a terrible accident. She's been hit by a car. You need to come now. And that's when my heart stopped. Knowing very little, the Bakers rushed to the hospital in Florida. They were frantic with questions. The hospital had told them she was in surgery, but weren't telling them the extent of Bailey's injuries, the plan, the prognosis for their oldest child. And when you asked for details, unfortunately, they said, well, we we can't share that with you. The response is, what do you mean you can't tell us? Hospital staff told them they couldn't share information because Bailey was 18, a legal adult, and didn't have a health care proxy. That's a legal document that names someone who can speak for you, make decisions for you, if you're too sick or hurt to make them for yourself. The officers and the medical staff literally, legally, could not share her her situation with us. The Bakers argued, she's our child. She still lives with us. She's on our insurance. We should be the ones making the decisions for her. But the hospital's hands were tied. The law is the law. Bailey's life was basically in the hands of the ethics committee or the ethics board of the hospital. And you can observe and listen and they'll ask you your opinion, but at the end of the day, that's their call. What did that do to you? I mean, as parents? It's incredibly frustrating. Um, I, you know what, it's just, you're in such a fog. You just you just don't know what's happening. And and then to be kept in the dark further, it's, it's even harder. Scott, Bailey's stepfather, says he should have known to get a healthcare proxy for Bailey when she went off to college. He's a certified financial planner and says talking about healthcare proxies is a natural conversation he has with his clients. But more often than not, those conversations are focused on older people. You just don't contemplate this for your teenage kids. When you're sending your kids off to college, you're, you're worried about their, what clothes they have and getting them down there and setting up their, your dorm room and things of that nature. The notion of, oh, we have to get a healthcare proxy too, just doesn't even dawn on anyone. In the end, having a healthcare proxy couldn't save their child. After an agonizing six weeks of surgeries and disappointments, Bailey remained in a coma and was eventually taken off life support. It was a gut-wrenching decision that the Bakers supported, but because they didn't have that healthcare proxy, it was the ethics board, not Bailey's parents, who made the decision. It just, it felt like torture is what it felt like to us. You just, you, you can't fathom it. And no one thinks it'll be their child. Yeah. No one thinks it'll happen to them. Shoni and Scott, who have two other daughters, have started a foundation in Bailey's memory, educating parents and others on the importance of healthcare proxies for unmarried adult children. We were put in a position we never expected to be in. And um, I, I just can't see any other family having to go through what we did. And what's your hope? 
once people see this piece. Our hope is that just this becomes just a matter of course. You know, just like getting your driver's license or you know, getting your voter registration card or enrolling in college, this is just something that every family does. When you turn 18, this is what you do. What do you think Bailey would think of this work? She would be proud of it. She would. If, uh, if she was here, she would be a big part of this. So we have to be her proxy. We have to do this work for her. Bailey's story is painful to hear, but so very important in a family's overall planning process. I want to welcome David Peterson. He's the head of Advanced Wealth Solutions here at Fidelity, and he's going to help us navigate every step of the process. David, thank you for being here. Great to be with you. David, no one wants to imagine worst case scenarios for their children or their families, but accidents like Bailey's can happen or even more mundane things where an adult can't advocate for themselves. How does the Baker's mission to educate other families about this strike you? Well, the Baker's experience is heartbreaking. But when it happens uh, unexpectedly, when it happens traumatically, when it happens to someone young, and when you don't have information or control over the circumstance, Mm -hmm. it makes it that much worse, I think. Yeah. And to me, their mission about getting people aware of healthcare proxies is a really important mission. Yeah, you talked about information. So let's level set for a minute. Give us the definition of a healthcare proxy. Right. Well, a healthcare proxy is really just a simple document that allows someone to act on your behalf in the circumstances when you can't. So important only when you can't advocate for yourself. Correct. Correct. And it's also important because of the HIPAA regulations. We talked about information. Yeah. Medical professionals can't share with other people what is considered private information, yeah. and your medical information is private. So is it the same thing as a power of attorney? I mean, if you have power of attorney, are you covered, so to speak? Well, power of attorney is a very generic sort of term mm. or phrase. It applies to, it can apply to a lot of different scenarios. So I can have a power of attorney over financial decisions. I can have a power of attorney over legal matters. Um, and I can have a power of attorney over healthcare matters, yeah. which is what we commonly refer to as a healthcare power of attorney, a healthcare proxy. Um, there are a lot of different, uh, similar phrases that accomplish the same things. When you consider Bailey's story, mm-hmm. why isn't this top of the list for every parent? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it's mostly that people just aren't aware. When you think about children, college-age children, you've just spent the first 18 years of their lives speaking for them, deciding for them. You're their guardian in every respect. The law says when they turn 18 or when they reach the age of majority, they're their own person. Mm -hmm. And so in their situation, they were put into this, um, this event where they were acting or thought they could act as they did for the first part of Bailey's life. Yeah, yeah. And now they couldn't. Yeah, yeah, they were shocked. I mean, really shocked. Yeah, Um, so to me, it's like people just don't know that they have to take this action. And let's face it, people aren't really expecting to have to take this kind of action. To me, it's kind of like an insurance policy. Insurance is for things that happen infrequently. Mm but there's a high cost to them when they happen. Yeah. And so to me, a healthcare proxy is a really low cost way to have a good insurance policy. I know every situation is is different, but let's lean into that for just a second. Like yeah. what could be an, an entree into that conversation with your, with your child? I would go brass tacks. You're going away to school. Here's a checklist of things that we need to do. Health insurance, renter's insurance, car insurance, all the things that we've taken care of for you Traditionally, mm. we now need to transfer to you to own right. yourself. Yeah. This may be the way the conversation goes. One of those things is thinking about healthcare proxies. Let's say something unexpected happens to them. They're injured, for example, and they can't make decisions on their own. You want to have a healthcare proxy so that you can make decisions on their behalf. Without one, you'll have no say in the matter. Even though I'm their parent, even though they're on my insurance. Even if you're their parent even if you're their guardian, even if they're on your insurance, they're now an adult. And the law says when you're an adult, you need these in place. And the hospital would make the decisions, not me. Correct. These important conversations, Mm. they 
always feel so much bigger before you have them, but this can be a difficult one to talk to your kids about or anybody. Yeah, I think it could be difficult to talk to anyone about. I, I think I would actually argue that with children or college age <laughs> young people, it's probably an easier conversation. Mm. Again, because no one's expecting to ever have to actually use it. Mm. I think it's more difficult as people get older. Yeah. Because as we get older, we start to think about our own mortality and morbidity. Mm -hmm. And those are things we don't want to think about. But when I'm 18, when I was 18, I was not thinking about these things. Right. So had my parents come to me and said, we're going to have you sign this healthcare proxy, I would have been like, okay. Right. Yeah. What's the difference between a healthcare proxy and a living will? Right. So the healthcare proxy gives someone the authority to act on your behalf. The living will is basically your your desires of what you want to have happen related to your care. This is usually mostly around, you know, end of life, life saving kinds of things. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. do do you want to do you want them the medical professionals to take all actions to save your life or not? Right. Do you want a feeding tube? Do you not? Do you want a respirator? Do you not? And so what it's intended to do is guide the person who is your agent so that they understand when they are making decisions on your behalf, the guidelines on which they should be acting. Got it. We've talked about Bailey and the Bakers and that situation. Um, mm -hmm. But this isn't just a conversation for young adults. No, it's for everybody. In fact, it's one of the core documents that we recommend for everyone to have when they think about their estate planning. Mm -hmm. Married, single, young, old, everyone should have one. And and who should be your healthcare proxy? I mean, do mm. I automatically think I would be the healthcare proxy for my teenage daughter, or are there other things to consider? Yeah, no, it's a great question, and I think um, not not to uh, cop out on my answer, but it's unique to yeah. any individual. The core thing is it can be any competent adult um, that can act on your behalf. What I think you want to think about is does the person have the sort of the mental and emotional capacity to make the decisions mm. that you're going to ultimately be asking them to make. Mm. It's a big responsibility. I can give you the example with my dad when he was at the end of his life. He was signing a healthcare proxy then. Now he was still competent, but he was ending, you know, he was coming to the end of his life and his wife was going to be his healthcare proxy mm -hmm. quite naturally. And she actually said to the rest of to me and my siblings, I'm signing this, but I'm not making this decision on my own because mm, mm. I'm not sure I can. Mm, mm. So there you have it. And this is actually an important point. A lot of people ask, can I, can I make multiple people yeah, my yeah. agents? You can. I'm just not sure it's a great idea. Mm. If you think about the medical professional on the opposite side of the table who's looking for a decision to be made, they usually want one person making that decision. They don't want to necessarily have to go to a committee of people right. who may not agree, yeah. by the way, yeah. on what the path forward should be. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's a tough one. So if I choose someone to be my healthcare proxy, how long is it? I mean, how long does it endure? Like, can, yeah. is it, what do I do? Yeah, they don't really expire. Usually when you sign a healthcare proxy, the language in the form states that you're revoking all the prior authorities that you've issued. Mm -hmm. The important thing to remember there is if you have had one before that named a different agent and you've shared that with your medical professionals, you probably want to share the new one with them and say, mm -hmm. hey, I've signed a new one. I've revoked the old one. Okay. And here, here's a new one. Let me go into that. So yeah. how do you, like if I get divorced or I have a falling out with a person who's on my healthcare proxy, how do I revoke or cancel it? What What's the process? Well, uh, so it's going to differ by state. Okay. So uh, if you're thinking about married couples in particular, sometimes in some states, a divorce or separation automatically removes the, the agent mm -hmm. um, and it would go to whoever the successor agent is if you've named one in other states, the whole document gets revoked automatically. Okay. So okay. You, you really need to kind of look to the state law to say, to, to, to determine what happens. Right, right. That makes sense. Let's talk brass tacks. Mm. I want to establish a healthcare proxy. Mm -hmm. Start me from the beginning. What do I do? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Most states actually have forms online. It, it's usually a one or two page document. And um, while it is a legal document, you don't need an attorney to, to draft it for you. Like I said, most mm -hmm. states have 
the form that they've created for their state that allows this transfer of power, essentially. And usually uh, it needs to be signed by two witnesses. Um, and oftentimes there's a notary mm, okay. to verify that the people signing it are the people who they claim who say to be. They are, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but that that also varies by state. So again, you probably want to just look to your state. Yeah. And all this is online. So go to the state's website. Does it cost anything? It's a legal document, but you don't have to have an attorney drafted for you. The states provide it for you. Right. It's a simple form. So okay. The, so I the, might pay a notary, but beyond that. Exactly. Okay. That's what I was just going to say. You might have to pay a notary a small fee to do the notarization, but generally not. Okay. And I have this form. So yeah. once I've filled it out, what do I do with it? Well, you definitely don't want it in a safe deposit box. <laughs> you want it readily available. Again, um, medical emergencies decisions need to usually be made quickly. So mm -hmm. you want to give a copy to your agent because you, you want to know that they they want to know the responsibilities that they have. When you say agent, I just want to clarify, that's the person. That's the person. Okay. Yeah. You want to give it to the person that you're giving this responsibility to mm -hmm. so that they have it on hand in case they need to show evidence of it mm -hmm. at the hospital or with your doctor. Um, you want to probably give it to your caregiver and maybe to your local hospital that you're mm -hmm. using so that everyone kind of knows what the situation is. So, but there's no place I need to like officially file it. No. No. Okay. It just needs to be readily accessible. Okay. Imagine if something happened and your healthcare proxy is in your safe deposit box. Right. Right. I don't know where the key is. Right. Okay. Yeah. End of story. Like there's, they're not going to be able to act on your behalf. They and have to show evidence that you've given them that authority to do it. And then you could be in a situation like the Bakers. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's interesting because everyone I share this story with, they're like, oh my gosh, I got to get that done. Right. But so many people haven't done it or don't do it. And it's it just is so easy. So Yeah, I, I just think it comes from a place, again, people aren't aware of it. You, you've spent your whole life sort of speaking on behalf of your children. And just because they go away to college doesn't make you think that they're not children anymore. Yeah, they're yeah. always your children. Yeah. And so I think in our minds, that means, well, I can still make decisions for them. Unfortunately, right. the law says no. Any final thoughts that you want to leave folks with? You know, my thought is that this is, again, it's one of the core documents that we recommend for everyone. We've been focused on younger people and college age people, but it really applies to everyone. Mm. Married, divorced, young, old, um, really everyone, in my opinion, should have a healthcare proxy. David, thank you so much. It's been such a valuable conversation. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. And a special thanks to the Baker family for sharing their story with us. For information on their foundation that's working to educate families on the importance of healthcare proxies, head to our website at fidelity.com slash money unscripted or check out the show notes. You'll also find articles on key estate planning documents and links to all of our other episodes. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe to Money Unscripted because it's your life. Get your money's worth.